The following podcast is sponsored by Structure Tech. We are currently located in Minneapolis, Denver, Colorado Springs, the four main markets of Texas. And on April 19th, we will be in Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia as well. Crazy. Wow. That is amazing. And where were you at last time we had you on? So we started in 2016 on my garage. Welcome, everybody. You're listening to Structure Talk, a Structure Tech presentation. My name is Bill Ulrich, alongside Tessa Murray and Ruben Saltzman. As always, your three-legged stool up in the Northland, talking about all things houses. We are very excited today to have an old friend of ours on the podcast, Daniel Felt from Cura Home Maintenance. We're going to dig into Daniel's now very flourishing business, things taking off like a rocket. It's somewhere on the other side of Mars right now. So welcome, Daniel. How are things going? Thank you, Bill. Yeah, it's great to be here. Life is great. Got a newborn at home and business is growing, like you said. And yeah, we've got happy customers. So everything is good. Give us a quick recap of the last uh, 24 months of your life. And if we could, before we even do that, just for anybody who didn't hear the first podcast we did with you like a year and a half ago or something, let's just rewind even more and uh, refresh us on what you do, Daniel. For sure. So we are a routine home maintenance company. We have kind of three branches. So our first goal is the routine maintenance. We visit our clients' homes once a quarter. And we do everything that you're supposed to be doing if you were the perfect homeowner, but we all know that no one does. So maybe it's minor, changing smoke alarm batteries or cleaning refrigerator coils. We essentially, we do about 28 items for our clients' homes from cleaning AC units, clean dryer vents, changing all the filters, delivering softener salt, cleaning out those HRVs, ERVs, air exchangers, whatever you want to call them. We do everything and we try to just go above and beyond when we're doing it so just taking care of our clients homes our second branch is air duct cleaning that today is roughly about 50 percent of our business mostly because of seo and the way that we clean air ducts and our most recent division is handyman services we are currently located in minneapolis denver colorado springs the four main markets of texas and on april 19th we will be in georgia atlanta georgia as well crazy wow. that is amazing and where were you at last time we had you on so we started in 2016 on my garage, 2017, still me, had a part-time guy in 2018. We had a two crews then, bought a third in 2019. And so we came into 2020 with three vans. I had three employees a year ago. So we've hired a few people and grown a little bit in the last year. So yeah, in, in 2019, we had two or three crews running, you know, trying to service a couple homes a day. And I was doing everything from sales to marketing. We had one office person answering phones and scheduling. Very different today. Okay. So how did you end up in Texas and Colorado? So our ultimate goal is to be nationwide by the end of 2024. So a little bit of it is throw a dart. We launched Denver because of the similarities that it is to Minneapolis. Similar layout, similar demographics. It's also growing. I've heard a number as high as 30,000 new residents a month. So we launched there. It's also easy to get to not knowing what it would be like to launch a different location. I know that I could be in Denver by the end of the day if I really had to on a quick flight from Minneapolis. So knowing that, I've only had to go there once in the very beginning. So that was that reason. We launched Texas next because when we are opening a new location, we are doing it as a separate entity. So a new payroll account, new QuickBooks account, new bank account. And with Texas, we could open up four markets with one legal entity. So we launched Dallas, Austin, San Antonio, and Houston with just one payroll account. And that was really nice. We launched Dallas at the beginning of March, and we just sent our third crew there on Monday. We're currently doing more in Dallas than I was at the beginning of last year in Minneapolis, four years in. So Dallas took off. From that, we decided what metro area is most similar to Dallas and Atlanta is next. And then we have two more after that. So we'll be in the next one in May and then the next one in June. And I think we're going to try to just collect a little bit of cash in August through November so that we can ride out our slightly slower season in the winter. Sure. That's incredible. <laughs> Yeah. Thank what you. a change a year can make. Huh? Yeah. We have been really blessed to have an amazing group of people here that all kind of believe in the same thing. We're all obsessed with customer service. You know, Cura is Italian. If you spell it a little bit different, it means to care for. We just care about our clients and, and the people that work here. They care about their day-to-day -day job. It's, they don't just come here and sit in a cubicle and do their thing all day. It's We're really, we are a very mission-driven company. And I've been so fortunate that the people that work here agree with my crazy ideas and we all work to achieve them. So. <laughs> you were ahead of your time. You hate to think that it was a great thing, a pandemic, or having people move out of their office into their home and suddenly they're staring at the, the walls of their house instead of their office. But suddenly your services are, are deemed much more important. 
Yeah, I was really freaked out. I think most of us were when when COVID hit. I think it would be unnatural to to be super confident at a time like that. But I was very hesitant. I you know nervous about where the company would go, and we were very fortunate. Essentially, mid April and May hit last year, and we took off. Our phones started ringing. They never really stopped. So people doing renovation projects or moving into a new home, they want their airs clean after that. The routine maintenance side of our company really took off. We came into last year with about 200, and we acquired 300 more routine maintenance clients that we every three months. And we plan on bringing on a thousand more in the Minneapolis market this year. So yeah, the more time that people are at home, they realize that they want that space to be clean. They want it to be the way they want it. And, and we're happy to take care of it for them. Super cool. Now, Daniel, how are you dealing with training people? Like if you, if you've got people working out in Dallas, how are you training them? Are you, are you flying back and forth and doing it yourself? Do you fly them up? How's that all work? Yeah, so we hire people, put on, put an ad out. We are looking for certain DISC assessment personalities. We use DISC to hire people. So we look for a certain personality, save a lot of time that way. You know, narrow that down to three, four candidates. We do Zoom interview and hire the guy. We fly him here and we, we prefer to do about 10 days of, of training. And then they, unfortunately for Texas, have been driving a, a van back home that's fully equipped with all the equipment. And then we will either, depending on where they're at, we either fly one of our guys there for that third week of training, or they have really grasped it. They have, you know, we didn't have to teach them maybe some of those customer service skills or whatever, but the caliber of individual that we're hiring, that two weeks of training is really getting you about 90, 95% of the way there. And then just at the rate that we're growing, we just learn how to take care of things really quickly. So if they have a question, we have an internal Facebook group. They'll throw a photo up of a, how do you get this air duct cover off? And no one's ever seen it before. And within like a minute, one of our guys that's like NACA certified or whatever it might be, we're answering that question really fast. So just working together as a team, we're able to train, but we get them up here, come here, get used to our vibe, what kind of culture we have. You know, we're fast paced, go like crazy. It's almost impossible to not pick up on the adrenaline that's going on here. And then, so they get really excited, get jazzed up and then they go back home and they take that with them and we start rocking and rolling. Wow. So Daniel, are they just going out in the field and shadowing for those 10 days here while they're Mostly, training? Like probably about nine out of the 10 days is just going out with, with our sales guy for a day, going out and cleaning air ducts for several days, doing routine maintenance for several days, working in the office for about a day, seeing how do we answer the phones? You know, here's 60 page manual on here's all the questions that we've ever been asked and here's how we answer them. So just getting a really good idea that when you call the office, and you're talking to Joey, here's what Joey looks like. And here's what she's equipped to do for you. Well, you know, cause I think of it as the office should be equipping the people on the field to be successful. Oh, I think that's wonderful. Cause so many times I feel like in businesses, you know, the office kind of is in their little world and the people out in the field are in their little world and don't really, you know, have an appreciation kind of for the complexities of, of their roles and responsibilities. Yeah. And I, I've noticed that too, in a lot of service. And if you, if you're not aware of that, for sure, Tessa, you're, you're hundred percent right. Like it's, it's almost like a battle of like the guys in the field, they want more time on a job or they're mad about the drive time schedule or whatever it is. So you, you have to really make sure that they understand what each other are going with. Our client care coordinators, they do go out and they clean air ducts on a few jobs. They spend a day in the field. So they know what it's like to, wow. to be out there. What is it like when you're running behind and you have to hit that next arrival window, you know, that feel wow. that stress a little bit. It makes everyone have a little bit of compassion for the people that they're working with. That's amazing. So two weeks to get somebody up and running in your world, things are pretty fairly routine, right? Every house has a water heater and every house has a furnace and they may or may not have this or yeah. does that make it easier? In a, in a sense, they're similar, but but almost they're not. The routine maintenance side of our company is for sure just on, it's on autopilot. Like, you know, people post about us or, or hear about us. We go out, we give an estimate, they sign up and we barely have or have any issues. It's very simplistic. The training, I, I would say it takes a little bit longer than two weeks, Bill. Just, you know, when you really push it back, if I'm going to open a new location today, we need about six weeks from getting the, like, just like the legal stuff set up and then posting that job for about a week or two. Usually people have to give a two week notice and then, you know, to get here, train here for 10 days, you know, we can somehow in about six weeks, pull that off between everyone involved. Oh, to open up another location. Yeah. Okay. I, I was more talking about getting somebody from zero to 65 on the interstate in terms of doing that job. For like these regional service managers, I would say about two weeks. But if you were going to come on as a technician and you're like, I'm applying to clean air ducts or I'm applying to do routine home maintenance with your company, you need about four weeks to really, before I would send you out alone, you know, so there's different calibers of people that you're hiring. A regional service manager, they usually have got stuff down in about two weeks, just a, a technician that we're hiring our maybe they like, you know, like mowed lawns last summer or worked in a restaurant. Those take about four weeks to 
be fully trained in. Are you getting a, a wonderful response to your ads? For hiring? Employment ads, yeah. Uh, it's been interesting because I assumed like last summer we would have rocked it out of the park with high unemployment. And unfortunately, just with the things that the incentives that the government has in place for people that are on employment, it's not that great. I don't, we don't have people clawing at the door, but we have a full-time HR guy right now who's hiring people. So that's really what we needed to keep people coming in the door. But when people are here, we barely ever lose an employee. People get hooked on that adrenaline growth and then they, they stay around for a long time. You know, one thing you said to me, Daniel, that stuck out is that you you use the, the disc to help you with hiring. And I thought that was really interesting. I mean, I wanted to ask you about that, how you decided on the disc, because we recently kind of started using something similar to that called the mm -hmm. Acumax to help us with hiring and getting to know candidates too. So is that something that your HR manager brought to the team or was that your idea or? We, we do work with a coach and they really encourage us to use that. And so when you hired one or two or three people in the, and they're the wrong person in the wrong seat, that's when you really realize like there's got to be a better way to do mm -hmm. this. And you look at some of the larger companies that really focus on, on any sort of personality test and you're like, there must be something behind this. So that's really why we jumped on that train. And can I ask what the average profile is that you're looking for? Uh, really like DCs for some reason. Okay. So, yeah. Can you explain to people that are listening that may not know what that is? Yeah. So I would have to really dive into it. I'm, I'm not super educated, so I'm not the best, but as someone who you get energy from people, but also you like systems and processes is kind of to summarize what we're mm -hmm. looking for in a person. And sometimes people don't even realize what type of person they are. If you even ask them those type of questions, they won't even know how to answer them. So, so that's kind of what we're looking for. Well, you know, it's interesting because you said it's someone who gets energized by people. So I would guess that means like someone who's kind of a little bit more outgoing and extroverted. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Yeah, and for sure. These are quote unquote technicians that you're hiring, right? To do mm -hmm. these tasks of, you know, changing furnace filters, cleaning air ducts, all of that. And you're hiring people person yeah. to do mm -hmm. this, not yeah. your stereotypical okay. trades person who might be a little bit more introverted, technical. Right. The guys who are most like extroverted people, and this is brutal that we do this. It's kind of cutthroat, but we have on our board in the warehouse, our guys are split up into teams and it's a competition. So reviews, if you upsell something that a customer needs, or if you get a bad review or a callback, it's all posted on that whiteboard. So we've created a culture. It's kind of like a chicken coop where if there's one person that's doing bad, they get picked on by the others because why'd you get a bad review? And that's helped us. Why wasn't that person's furnace working after we clean the air ducts? And now every technician in the company knows that Joe had a callback, a, a furnace that didn't turn on. And I tell you what, all of a sudden callbacks stop happening when that is public information for everyone to see. So one of the coolest things on there is, is seeing who's getting five-star reviews. And if I told you like the personalities of the guys, the ones who are the most extroverted, they always have the most reviews. That's fantastic. I love it. Yeah. One of my guys, he said it best and we were talking about, and I called him out at one of our team meetings. I'm like, Zach, why do you have so many reviews and why are your tips so high? Because we track tips on that as well. And he goes, when people want to talk to me, I talk to them. And when people don't want to talk to me, I don't talk to them. It's like, oh, okay. You know, and it seems simple, but some people, they just don't quite get that social interaction. Side. You know what? Emotional intelligence, it goes a long way in this industry. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. You've yeah. got to read your clients. Yes. Yeah. So your team didn't have any problem with the transparency, both positive and negative, if you want to put it in that terms, right? Or praise and complaints. You know, it's really interesting. If you have an issue with it, Bill, you're probably not going to work here very long. So you just don't fit in with our culture. Like, you know, we we're a very competitive, we're growing really fast and we really care about our customers. Like it's not about the money here. It's, it's about doing something really cool, growing fast, taking care of clients in their homes. We barely ever get a bad review, but I mean, when they do, usually there's a reason behind it, but if we get a bad review, we write that on the board at our team meeting and we break down every single sentence. How can we prevent this in the future? You know, why did it happen? What system do we have to change internally so that a review like this never happens again? I like that. I like that a lot, okay. just simply because I'm guessing when that furnace doesn't turn on after the duct cleaning, it's not anything complicated. It's just that right. you didn't double check that it actually turned on. Yeah. And everybody's learning from everybody else's mistakes. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. That's important. Yeah. So what are you doing to get new business in these new markets? We spend obnoxious amount of money on Facebook and Google in the beginning. 
But what's worked really well for us is social media, people posting about us, and it, it's almost, it becomes a trend. So I think it's close to 75 social media influencers across the nation that are posting about us on a regular basis. And so then now let's say like for me, I think I have like, I check Instagram once a week or something. I have like 500 followers. But if someone who I think is really cool posted about Cura Home and then Cura Home comes to my house, then they post about it. And then, and so you create this train of people being like, oh my gosh, look at how dirty my refrigerator coils were. And so glad Cura Home came today. And so people are just posting about us. It's almost like a pride thing of like, my bathroom fan was dirtier than yours. And, but now look how clean it is. So it's really <laughs> interesting to watch that trend of, because we've gotten to a point where this routine maintenance, where I don't think we could stop it. Like the phones would continue to ring with people wanting routine maintenance because people post about it so often of just, it's like, it's a weird pride thing. Like Kira Home was here today and, and they did this and look at the photo they showed me. Cause you're the pride of the neighborhood. You're actually taking care of your house the way it should be. I've always envisioned this as neighbors sort of sit around and talk and they see a van in front of the house and like, I wonder why they're there. And, and it's yours. And the owner's like, oh yeah, we're just taking care of things that we need to versus the other person who hasn't done any maintenance over 10 years and it's, right. the, the furnace has failed prematurely or there's a horrible water leak just because somebody was completely clueless that yep. that one little thing had been dripping for seven years. Right. Yeah. Daniel, what would you say are maybe like the top 10 to 15 services that you do for your regular home maintenance that people like to sign up for? Kind of need to go through just like the, the rooms, you know, from the kitchen, it's degreasing the range hood, cleaning or sharpening that garbage disposal. The dishwasher filter is something that most pe- people don't know about. And then cleaning the refrigerator coils is another big one. In the bathroom laundry areas, no one, almost no one knows that their, their washing machine has a filter. A lot of the new models do. And then clean the dryer vent. I don't know if we have a single client that doesn't have us do that on an annual basis. It really, most people know that's super important. Yeah. And in the utility room, almost everyone wants every single thing done for that. So some Softener salt, we get a we get a semi-load of 18 pallets of softener salt delivered to our office about every four to six weeks. And you know, changing the filters, the humidifier, cleaning out that air exchanger is really important too. Changing out the water paddle on the humidifier. So basically everything in the utility room we're taking care of. And then cleaning like the AC unit. So the dryer vent, if you're gonna ask me like what's one thing that for sure everyone has you do, I don't know a single routine maintenance client that that hasn't asked us to clean that dryer vent on an annual basis. Daniel, did you have different maintenance requests when you went into markets like in the deep south and stuff compared to Minnesota? Yeah, learning about that. Some regions have softer salt, some don't, you know, swamp coolers, all this stuff. One thing that I've learned to do is spend about an hour on realtor.com on new market. And I just look through houses. I think what, you know, similar to you, when you guys look at a house, what you see, you know, I see a little bit different than, than the typical homeowner. And so we're just looking at that from a maintenance side. I've actually like connected with Ruben to ask, hey, can I talk to a home inspector? Do you know someone in this region? And I'll call them and say, here's what we do here's my list. If you were going to do this, what would you do differently? And, you know, when you ask for help, people are pretty open to giving you some help. So that's awesome. Like Colorado barely, I don't think anyone, maybe one person there that we ran into needs softener salt. Like it's not a thing there. So houses, especially in Texas, they don't have basements. You know, the, the furnaces in the attic, there's, you have to learn there's different stuff, but Mm -hmm. all kind of work similarly. It's just Mm -hmm. laid out differently or different items are needed. Things like Mm -hmm. that. Hey, Ruben, do you know a few uh, home inspection companies around the country? Just oh, maybe one or two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As we're talking here, I'm thinking about these locations that I'm like, oh, Daniel, I've got so many more people I need to introduce you to. Yeah. That you need to have a good partnership because I mean, we have a good partnership between the two of us. I mean, we regularly tell our clients about your services because yeah. there's so much that you can do that we're trying to tell our clients about. And it's like, for sure, Cura does this, Cura does that. It's, it's yeah. everything. Thing. And it goes back the other way. Then when mm-hmm. clients are asking you, your technicians, hey, what about what about this stain? And what do you think is causing it? And what can I do to fix it? And it's like, they're not home inspectors. Right. But then you send us business for mm-hmm. regular inspections, home maintenance right. inspections. And those are just kind of stripped down inspections where we're telling people about all the stuff that's the most important to take care of that's more high level than what mm-hmm. your technicians are doing. So, I mean, it's, there's very good synergy between what we do. For sure. sure. Yeah. yeah. We're not interested in inspecting homes. We want to come in, do that routine maintenance side of things. Our guys are asked questions. Our referral list for our technicians is so long of just people that we trust. And a lot of times when, when we're referring you guys out, 
it's like someone has some sort of moisture issue and they can't figure it out. Like, you know, of course, attics, you know, it seems like every few years the humidity gets up into the attic or all that stuff, you know, it's, it's crazy, but it's usually comes down to a moisture issue of, and it's just as simple as homeowners not knowing what they don't know. And our technicians, you know, we see four or five water heaters a day or whatever, but again, we're not, we can't diagnose those issues the way that you guys can, because you guys really are the experts for the, the whole entire home. Be interesting to see what you run into, like in Texas and Georgia, like what the common problems are that homeowners just don't know. In Texas, for sure, currently right now, it's it's not knowing about filters. Like they don't know that there's like a filter behind an air duct or they don't have any air duct. I mean, there's just, there's nothing. And so we're, we're having to, like in Minnesota, a return line can be, you know, 12, 18 inches. Well, those guys are having to like take brooms into some of these returns because they're like four by four feet. There was never a filter on it. And so the guys are literally like, they'll send a picture in a return line that looks like they're in a, the U.S. Bank Stadium <laughs> and they're in there cleaning stuff off. And I'm like, we did not sign up for that. But, you know, you just, you got there, you got to take care of the customer. You want to make sure that the entire system is clean. So our internal Facebook page, the pictures that go on there of these experiences are very oh interesting. Gosh, you got to charge extra for those air ducts that are the size of vehicles. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Can we, can we just kind of paint a picture? I think I understand what you're talking about, Daniel, but you have a furnace in the attic and you have just one gigantic return somewhere in the middle of the building and yeah. you, you blow the air out to the exterior walls and then it gets sucked back into the middle of the house. Is that a correct explanation? Yep. For sure. And then on top of that, like a lot of people don't have carpets in their homes in Texas. A carpet is a huge filter for your home. So now you don't have a carpet plus, you know, or, or enough rugs. Plus you don't have a filter at your return. There's no filter in your entire home. And so people are like, yeah, we don't know why it's so dusty. And I, like, I, I do, you know, so <laughs> yeah. So it's just, again, explaining that to the customer, you know, Hey, mm -hmm. we're here to air, clean your air ducts, but you need a filter here. And then on top oh. of that, we can take care of that filter for you too, if you want us to. So, oh my sure. gosh. I, I'd love to ask about the handyman business because because I can't imagine adding that component to your business model didn't just absolutely blow it up because everybody needs work done, right? Yes. And <laughs> I just imagine your phone's ringing every day, all day long, asking for somebody to come and fix this. So Bill, we launched our handyman service in, um, in Minneapolis mid-January, and we sent out one newsletter. And by the end of the day, we were booked out two weeks. January of, of 2020 or? 2021. Oh, 2021. So a few months ago. Yes. So today we're running three crews of handyman here in Minneapolis. And we had to take one of our client care coordinators, which I stole that title from you guys. And, <laughs> and one of our client care coordinators, just full-time handyman. If you call us and you press, I think it's number three for handyman services. It's, it's crazy how people need all kinds of stuff. The wind, you know, it was really windy in Minneapolis on Sunday, Monday, a piece of siding flies off. Well, it's not an insurance claim. You know, these large exterior companies, they don't want to come and do a $200, you know, siding job. And so in my opinion, and maybe this is wrong, but there's this low hanging fruit of large contractors don't have the resources or time. They don't want to spend, you know, time estimating these jobs or whatever. And so we're just, you know, just because of our contacts that we have from being in business, you know, just by telling people we haven't put a single dollar into handyman services yet. And I assume that we'll have eight or nine crews worth of handyman running by the end of the year. If things continue, the biggest thing that I think needs to happen is a answer your phone and your emails when they come in for handyman stuff, which a lot of people can't do because they get so busy so fast. And then just do what you say you're going to do when you show up on that job, price mm -hmm. it out and do the work that you said. And these guys are, these are a lot of handyman out there that they, they want to do handyman work. They don't want to run a business. We can run the business side of it. We'll give you the jobs and, and you show up and do a really good job and take care of that customer. Hey, Daniel, have you incorporated any sort of virtual estimating into the handyman service? So you have somebody sitting at a computer and a client can jump on a Zoom link and take their camera to the side of the house where, I don't know, if is this a piece of siding or is this a window or what am I looking at here? Are, are you doing anything like that to try to speed up the process of getting these jobs put together? You're always ahead of me, Bill. We have not. <laughs> um, that's a really good idea. We, at this time... If it's a simple job, we're trying to weed out what's going on, right? So is this like a two hour job? Because then we can come out for a couple hundred bucks and do it for you. Is this a two or three day job? Because then we should come out and give a bid. What are you thinking from a customer standpoint? And then, and then they'll say, you know, well, I want this, this, this done. Okay. We got to come out and give an estimate. Otherwise, could you just send us a picture of the siding that's popped off and how high it is? And they have the piece of siding usually. 
And so we can show up with the right size ladder, the right person to get it done and, and get that done for them. So we're doing pictures right now, but Zoom might be even a faster way because we already are having to hire a project manager for handyman stuff, a guy who will just go out and do those estimates, get the right bid for them, and then you know make sure the team is equipped to do the work when they show up. Just so I got a better idea of the scope of what you're doing, what's the smallest project you can recall and the biggest project? We'll come out and hang a picture for you. I think that's as small as as small as it gets. We'll put a nail in and, and hang a picture. But even that, those jobs have turned into like huge jobs because you know you're in a house that you need to go and get scaffolding and it's and it's a hundred and twenty pound barrel wheel or something crazy and it's a two man job scaffolding. I mean, you need hard hats almost to do this stuff. <laughs> so that's the smallest jobs. We're not a contractor. Or we're not a general contractor. So we're not like moving electrical. We're not moving plumbing. We've had people just ask us to do like a facelift on a bathroom. We can do that. You know, and that's like a week long project. We're not a general contractor. We're not moving walls. We're like the facelift of handyman companies I, I is, is really like anything that's improving the, the visual or the quality of your home, you know, or doing a small repair. If your entire house needed siding, that's not us. That's not our bread and butter. We have a one hour minimum and it's 129. And then, and from there you can, however, however much work you want, we'll book it out for you. And bring your wagon wheel. Yes. Put it up on, put it up on some vaulted wall <laughs> up near the top. Our average home is, you know, seven, eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars but you end up in the $12 million homes and people that live in $12 million houses buy nice stuff. And sometimes nice stuff weighs a lot or, you know, it's difficult to get into position. So yeah, we kind of do whatever we've assembled Murphy beds for people, every little odd end thing that you could imagine that people just don't have the time for. But also a lot of people today, they like people my age, they grew up in a daycare. They didn't grow up in a home, like tinkering with their dad in the garage. And so these skills are slowly being weeded out of generations. And if you're willing to work and, and you can train guys in, so we're already like, we have a handyman out there and he's already training in the, uh, an apprentice immediately. So we try to run in many, in Minnesota, we try to run 1.5 guys per crew. So that someone's always being trained in. So we get to add a van almost instantly if we need to. And are your handymen, do a lot of them, did they come from their own business and then they joined you or are you taking them and, and training them? We're really fortunate to test that because a lot of people, they hear about like our culture or what we're doing here. And they're like, I want that instead. Mm -hmm. And so they, they're coming to a place where we, we respect the life family balance and we don't expect you to like die every day at work or work till 7, 8 PM. We're like an eight to five company and come to work, do your job. We're not, our guys are not on a construction job until seven or eight o'clock at night. They're, they're back here. Our office is a ghost town at 5 PM. Everyone's gone. So we're, we work hard, play hard. So yeah, they're guys who have either done their own thing and then they ran out of work. And I, what I think what's happened to a lot of people is the word of mouth thing has faded off. And if you haven't taken advantage of social media mm -hmm. and, and the internet in some way or, or another, you suddenly your customer base has vanished and they mm -hmm. don't, and people don't know why. Are you hiring the same disc behavioral profiles for the handyman? We're a little more flexible the in the handyman thing because it's a rare breed. So yeah, so yeah we're kind of, yeah. yeah, we look more at, at the skills on that side. And then we can, I can train you on the customer service stuff to be a, but again, yeah. you and they're like, wow, we, we really care about the way we, we treat our clients here. And then you want to fit in with everyone else. How about the smart home technology? Are you guys working on programming up things and, and working on any of those sorts of components? On a very basic level, like putting in smart uh, smart thermostat or doorbell, you know, the ring doorbells, things like that. We've installed a few of those. Initially, I was like, oh, we should get certified with ring. You know, they have like certified installers. We didn't even have time. We sent out that newsletter and it's like, boom, work. And, and so like, we don't even have time to try and generate more work work. We're just, you're just working instantly. So yeah, we can do that stuff. It's pretty basic. I don't know if you've ever done it, Bill. I, I did my own in about 10 minutes. If it's basic, like I have a battery powered thermostat. I want a smart one here. You bet we can do that for you. Yeah. My threshold for figuring those sorts of things out is pretty low. If, if you gave me fishing <laughs> electronics, I'll dive in and learn all about them, but a doorbell, no, thank you. I'm moving on. <laughs> I, I installed my own Ecobee and it, I will say it took me more than 10 minutes. <laughs> I have attempted to make my house a smart house, but you know, we have a, a smart thermostat, a smart doorbell and two smart smoke alarms. I feel like that's a, that's kind of about as smart as I want my house to be. I don't, I don't <laughs> yeah. know if I can be smarter. One thing that's going to intrigue me at Ruben, I forget what you call it, but I think you install it at the breaker box and it tells you what parts of your homes are using more energy. And that would be cool. But again, yeah. get on with the day and Kind of ready for ready to be done. My smart doorbell, I should say, is a uh, ten-month-old Boston Terrier that just loses his mind anytime <laughs> somebody pounds on the door. Yeah, and uh, the thermostat is basically under lock and key because it would be eighty-five degrees in my house if I allowed the uh, the rest of the inhabitants to have control of it. So. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> I think we talked about this. You, you got to just install a dummy thermostat, just mount it on the wall with an old school dial and not connect the wires to anything and put it in a really conspicuous location so the people in the family can feel like they have some control over it and then let them turn the <laughs> dial. <laughs> it doesn't do anything. <laughs> That's what you got to do. So Daniel, I have one more question about your moving out into other markets. Are, are you van based? In other words, are you mobile based? You send a van down there and is that the office? Yep. So one way that we're controlling quality is the phones, they all ring in, in, in Plymouth and our office here in Plymouth, Minnesota. And so we're dispatching it out to them. So in the very beginning, we, yeah, these guys are the same way, like an HVAC or a plumber, how you see their utility vehicles at their homes. That's what we're doing in these warmer markets that works great, but we are weighing our options on what it looks like in a cold market where your air compressors and fluids can't freeze overnight. You know, do you have a heater inside the van or, you know, what do you, how do you work that out? Because retail, you know, commercial space is just so expensive, but also how do you duplicate that culture? Like in Dallas, we now have three crews. I'm assuming we'll have six or seven by the end of the year. I, in my opinion, they should have a hub to come and kind of be a team in the morning or in the afternoon when they're done. So just figuring that out space and how do you do it cost efficiently without losing money. So right now it's, yep, these guys, we could have one anywhere in the U.S. and all the phones, they all ring at our office here. And that's really helped us to control quality. It gets, if there's a major issue, I hear about it very, very quickly. So it's, you don't get a bad review. You know, you're not hearing about things like a week or two after it's happened. You know, instantly if, if a technician is late to a job, you know about it right away. How many client care coordinators do you have? We have four full-time in the office, but then two gals that kind of step in and out because our goal is to respond to a lead within five minutes. So we, we dip in and out of that. So there's four full-time and we're planning on having 24 by this time next year. So we're basically hiring someone, a client care coordinator every two to three weeks. Crazy. Wow. Good for you, man. Yeah. Thank you. It's it's a, it's a very scary, fun experience, so, <laughs> but we've never missed a payroll. That's my promise. Uh, I promise I will never miss a payroll. You always get paid on Friday. I'll do whatever it takes. <laughs> I can't tell you how happy I am for you because I've known you for several years and I've seen your passion for doing what you do. And this growth couldn't happen to a better person. Thank so you. yeah, yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Appreciate that. So tell everybody how they can find you because now that you're, uh, you're all over the place, uh, let, let's get as many people calling you as possible today. Yeah. So our website is curahome.com. That's spelled K-U-R-A, curahome.com. We are everywhere on social media. We even have a TikTok account now that people in Texas do schedule off of TikTok. So that's, wow. yep. So that's very interesting. But We do a lot of stuff on our social media. If you just want to keep up with like different ways to maintain your home or some of the interesting pictures, finding us on, on Instagram or Facebook is really great too. But our website is curahome.com. That gives us a pretty detailed information about what we're doing here. All right. So I'm going to let you brag on one more thing. So we all know that you've uh, recently become a dad. So what can you yeah. tell us about growing a business and growing a, a son? <laughs> yeah. So Weston, he's, uh, he's going to be nine months here in a few days. And it's, it has to be one of the coolest experiences ever. I come from a big family of six kids. So I always wanted to be a dad. And, you know, some people would think like, how, how do you balance all this? But my ground rule has always been since day one that I am going to have dinner with my family. And, and that's how my entire team is too. So I'm out of the office. I'm, I'm home for dinner every single night, hanging out with him and giving him a bath before bed or, or whatever part of being a dad you, you got to do. It's been very, very enjoyable. So I think we're also very lucky because he may be the happiest little human in the world. So um, <laughs> that's a little cherry on top as well. <laughs> now <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, well he can't talk back yet and yeah he, he's actually not even crawling yet so you just set him in a spot and then with a toy or you know <laughs> lifting a blanket up and down he's the happiest happiest person so i feel like once he can talk and walk he, he's probably gonna think i'm a loser and the, the journey will begin excited for that that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> Sounds easier than Bill's dog, right? Yeah. Anything's <laughs> easier than Bambino. He's yep, uh... exercise the dog and yeah. yeah. <laughs> Listen, I was away for a few days. I came home and he was ready to go. So I remember the good old days of babies. They're much easier to carry around inside your wife or your partner. Then once they come out, they're a lot of work. <laughs> then they start growing and they're in hockey or skating or dance or whatever and then they're a whole heck of a lot of work so yeah Ruben can attest to that right now he is his weekends are what you know hockey rink well we just finished the hockey season I was helping to coach my daughter's hockey team all winter and uh that was 
it's a lot of work. It was a, yeah. it was a <laughs> lot of time, but boy, it was a lot of fun too. Oh yeah. my goodness. Well, that's, that's the thing. And you'll know this, Daniel, cause you, you probably get these anyway, but once you're a parent, you'll start getting these history things popping up on your phone, like, mm-hmm. Oh, this day, five years ago. And it'll be some event where you're with your kid and it's, it's hard. You're like, yeah. Oh my God, it's gone by so fast. And right. they're driving now. Now I have yeah. a whole new set of worries. <laughs> well, one thing, one thing for you, I know, uh, I know your guys' kids aren't to the stage yet, but, um, one thing that I've learned from my parents is that they've expressed that having kids is really enjoyable, but grandkids, that's where it's really at. So, mm. so that's something to look forward to for if, if you're going through a rough patch, know that there'll be another fun, a fun stage coming along <laughs> soon enough. So you're not fully <laughs> responsible for the well-being of the child. Yeah. <laughs> yep. yes. Exactly. In my mom's case, she just feeds them a lot of sugar and then hands them back over. And you're, you have to deal with the <laughs> tantrums that go from there. The fallout. Yeah. Okay. Well, we should probably put a bow on this one. But Daniel, thank you very much for spending some time with us today. It's, it's just such a pleasure to hear about your the growth, your new family. I mean, I'm excited for you and your wife. And this is just keeps rolling. So thank you. You're a good person. Anybody who calls Kira, you're going to find that they will treat you just like family. So, but again, thanks Daniel for spending some time with us here today on Structure Talk. You've been listening to Structure Talk, a Structure Tech presentation. My name is Bill Ulrich alongside Tessa Murray and Ruben Saltzman. As always, thank you for listening. We will catch you next time. For more information on how we can provide you with the right information about your home before you buy or sell, contact us at StructureTech.com.